Good morning, everyone. We are in Germany at Speyer. There is a nice technical museum here, which you will see in my next videos. But today the attraction is an Audi A1 2018 model. Unfortunately, I was not able to take the new model because Audi came out with a new model, a brand new model. As usual, we'll start with the front part of the car. We have aggressive headlights here. The bonnet is small because the car is small and I would say it's not so aggressive. As usual on the uh, Audi models, we have this big air grill, big front air grill with a big Audi logo here. We don't have par front parking sensors uh, on the version I have here. In this area are the fog lights, but only the fog lights because the signal lights are placed here. This car comes with a 1.6 TDI engine, 116 horsepower and 150 newton meters. So it's a diesel, Euro 6 diesel. So we are on the right side of the car. As usual, we start with the side mirrors. They are quite normal with this uh, LED signaling light placed in the middle. The car comes with a 16 inch wheels. A uh, nice model from Audi, which I, which I like it. As you can see, the car is actually small. It has 3.9, it is 3.9 meters long, 1.4 meters uh, high and uh, 1.7 wide. The diesel tank, because I, as I told you, we have a diesel engine. We are now in the back of the car. We have a big Volkswagen logo here, which this time is metal, of course. Two nice tail lights, quite aggressive. Two inscription, A1 here and TDI here. Big exhausts placed down there. This is plastic, good quality plastic. A small spoiler here with a braking light there. The trunk is quite small because the car is small. It has only 270 liters. What is uh, interesting to mention, as you can see, we have two additional tail lights here. When the car is, when the engine is running and you open the trunk, this will also light up. Great. This car has also parking sensors, only back parking sensor, which are placed here. Great. On the inside, the driver's door contains the conventional control for windows, side mirrors and locking or unlocking the car. The dashboard is analog with a monochrome multimedia function display placed between the dials. Right above the central console, the well-known audio MMI interface comes on a 6.5-inch retractable media display screen, which is not so impressive comparative with the one you find at competitors. I'm very tempted to say that it's performant through menus, but the feedback when using navigation is quite disappointing. Otherwise, good resolution, not so many options available, not that you really need them. Pretty small steering wheel covered in leather with controls placed on each side. On the left side are the ones responsible for navigating through the MDF menus, while the ones on the right are responsible for volume, voice command and infos. A lot of plastic inside, two shiny ones on the top of central vents. This can be configurable and can come in different colors, but to be fair it doesn't have the touch of a high quality material. I am afraid the time will impact its shining. Between the vents, start stop and emergency lights controls are placed. The lever of the parking brake gives no possibility of having a central console placed between front passenger seats, so the multimedia controls are placed vertically. Below, three potentiometers for air conditioning, which by utilizing them you will feel the nice touch of an aluminum cover. Ambition version comes with heated seats configurable on two levels of intensity, drive select with three modes, dynamic efficiency and auto. ESP and rear window heater controls are also available. The gearbox, a 7-speed S-Tronic. Otherwise, good seats, space is not the strongest point, but it's not meant to be. Audi comes with standard audio system having 8 speakers, which is reasonable. 2018 Audi A1, a small-sized actor on our stage. Either as a 3-door or 5-door sportback, the Audi A1 ATX model was manufactured from 2015 until mid-2018. The idea of A1 was first introduced in 2010, so the car concept has not too much tradition for Audi. They wanted to have a representative for the small hatch or a super mini segment. The headlights, 
tail lights and bonnet design imitate bigger Audis, giving only a glimpse of their prestige to the tribe's smallest member. But has the A1 attitude of a true Audi? Let's find out. 1.6 liter TDI diesel engine, 116 horsepower and 250 Nm of torque, front wheel drive, 7 speed S-Tronic gearbox with cruise control, heated seats and a mechanical parking brake for almost 26,000 euros. This is the ambition version which comes with nice 16 inch wheels, 6.5 inch infotainment without touchscreen functionality and leather steering wheel. Next. As you already know, I would like to make an analysis based on four aspects. Price versus what you get and what some other options are. Who should buy this car? What is its audience? Good things versus bad things. And last but not least, how was my experience driving it? What are the conclusions? 26,000 euro for the baby child of the Audi family. Yes, it is a small car, more plastic and less metal, sufficient features. But I believe it has its identity. The TDI engine provides good feedback due to the fact that 250 Nm of torque cope better with the mass of the car, 1200 kilos. To be honest, looking at the car, 1.2 tons is too much. But then I remember that we have a diesel with an automatic gearbox which combined justify that. The trunk capacity, 270 liters. It is small, it's enough. Well, you don't buy this car to move the old furniture to the parents' house, right? It is small if you have wrong expectations. If you understand the car segment, then I would say it's just enough. The Ambition version has more feature than the Attraction one. You get cruise control, air conditioning, heated seats, back parking sensors. You don't get Xenon or LED lights, electronic parking brake and what else? I guess nothing. After all, I can live with not having electronic parking brake. Uh, yes, I really love it. How it drives, how you feel inside. I had no expectations at all, but now after I drove more than 600 kilometers, I declare myself pleasantly surprised. For 26,500 euros, you can get the Mini Cooper D Automatic, which looks nicer and has a BMW 3 cylinder diesel engine. For 21,500 euros, the legendary Volkswagen Polo has the same engine but less power and much more personality inside. And features. For 20,000 euros, Fiat 500 is smaller because it comes only in two doors version and is less powered. Hyundai i20 comes with an interesting 1 liter petrol engine and automatic gearbox for almost 21,000 euros. Honda Jazz is also a competitor for the Audi A1 for almost 22,000 euros. Beside the Hyundai i20, all other competitors have much more history and tradition behind than Audi A1. With almost 20 years of tradition, the Mini Cooper is a distinctive car, having a 1.5 liter 3 cylinder diesel engine, automatic gearbox, and almost the same power. It is a little bit more expensive than the A1, but I would say that the German English Fusion did a good job. It is indeed a serious competitor for the A1. Volkswagen Polo is the bigger and much older brother of the A1, both of them sharing the same MQB platform. Someone who has the intention of buying a Polo will also consider the A1 when evaluating the market, and vice versa. Polo was chosen as a 2019 car of the year in Europe. There should be a reason, I think. Fiat 500 is the cheaper competitor in our list, but despite that, believe it or not, it has more than 50 years of tradition. Passion is a feature. Even someone who has no idea about cars will say that Italians did it. Like many others, in the last 4-5 or five years, both Hyundai and Honda improved how their car looks inside and outside. Even if there isn't too much leather or metal inside, the ingenuity and mechanical reliability make me really believe that both of them are serious competitors for the A1. The audience for A1? Definitely younger people. As said in the beginning, I was really surprised how the car behaves on the road, its maneuverability 
and the feeling you get as a driver. This is the Audi younger people buy more than any other Audi, Top Gear team said in 2018. I am tempted to say that they are right. It is a great car within the city. We had it also in our journey over the weekend, so two people can also enjoy it on a mid-distance trip. Good things versus bad things. This time we travel in Germany to Speyer and Sinsheim to enjoy one of the best experiences in terms of discovering the past. This episode will reveal in the second part that the past was great. Don't miss it. As positive aspects, I would firstly mention the feeling and feedback you receive from the car. You just love driving it. The car is enjoyable and I would say that is not because of the engine transmission packet I had. I think it just feels great driving it. Then it can definitely be a good option for a city car. Easy to drive and park, compact dimensions, it looks fresh. Why not? Negative points, a little bit too expensive. And you have sufficient features, but many more are still available for extra money. And the maintenance is still expensive. So one for competitors, zero for Audi. The quality inside. It's not bad, seats are comfortable, but if the car would have a mouth to speak, it will not shout proudly, but rather shy that it is an Audi. From 2019, there is a new Audi A1. New engine configuration, completely new aspect, both inside and outside. Better looking, much more personality. Let's sum up. Three days, more than 600 kilometers in Germany. As an overview, we felt good in the car. I was surprised about the feedback I received by driving it. The 1.6 liter TDI engine fits perfect with the car, it has easily the best fuel economy. The 2018 A1 is a nice car, it's great to have it in the city due to the compact dimensions. Nowadays there is a new model which is completely different, but if I would go back in time I would not spend 26,000 euro to get it new. I would most probably choose the Polo.